Good morning, everybody. Uh, I'd like to take a second to thank you all for coming out. And uh, as the title of the presentation says, uh, this morning we're going to spend some time discussing tooling for machining composite materials. Uh, my name is Todd Petrick, and I work with the Inside Engineering Group at OSG Tap and Die. And for those that uh, maybe are unfamiliar with OSG, uh, we're the largest round tool company in the world. We've been manufacturing taps, of course, uh, but aside from that, drills, reamers, end mills, specialty round tools, and so forth for over 70 years. Discussing composites brings about an interesting question, and, and that is, what exactly is a composite? And essentially, a composite is defined as a ma engineered material that is produced from constituent materials to give it its final properties. Um, those constituent materials either fall into the category of the matrix or the reinforcement. And using this logic, concrete would be considered a composite, uh, plywood would be considered a composite, a uh, bit of a history lesson, uh, de Havilland Mosquito, fighter, fighter bomber from World War II, one of the fastest planes of its era, and then the U.S. Navy PT boat, something like 6,000 horsepower in these boats. What do they have in common? Anybody? They were made from composites. In fact, back then the state of the art was plywood. Both of these items were made with plywood, and uh, the important thing about that was not only did it allow the uh, high horsepower to weight ratio. Uh, in the case of both of these, it allowed either uh, smooth surfaces for airflow uh, or smooth surfaces on the hull of the PT boat, uh, increasing their speed and performance. However, when we talk about composites today and for the purpose of this presentation, really what we're discussing is, is what is normally coined or referred to as CFRP and CFRP stands for Carbon Fiber Reinforced Plastic. Uh, essentially, it is a series of carbon fibers uh, laid up, placed in specific directions, uh, along with a plastic matrix of some form, and there's many different types. Uh, CFRP is not just CR CFRP. Um, it can be as varied as the engineer's imagination can make it. In the case of the fuselage section from the previous slide, uh, oftentimes these parts will begin life with a series of tooling or mandrels. Uh, the upper photograph is a essentially computer controlled tape dispenser and it is going to lay a series of carbon fiber impregnated tape in a specific direction and a specific order uh, in several different layers depending on what the purpose of that object is and where its strength needs to be directed. After the uh, carbon fibers are put onto the tooling, they're subsequently loaded into an autoclave which is a giant oven and they're cured under high temperature and heat to give the composite layup its final series of properties and strengths. When we think about machining composites, carbon fiber composites uh, specifically, it is quite different from metal cutting. Uh, I come from a metal cutting background and it was uh, a big change from what I had been used to dealing with. Uh, in the matrix itself, you have the individual carbon fibers that are incredibly strong. Uh, a lot of people refer to the stuff as you know, 10 times stronger than steel, uh, as the case may be. Uh, they're also very small, small diameter fibers. Uh, when combined with the matrix, you end up with a chip or a swarf that is phenomenally abrasive, very different than metal. Uh, the metal cutting operation, the chips generally tend to remove heat from the cut zone. Uh, most cutting tool people kind of rely on that as a management tool. That is not the case with composites. The heat that we generate cutting these materials is usually transferred in large to the cutting tool itself. Very difficult environment, very uh, highly elevated temperatures and accelerated wear from the abrasive particles. Some of the advantages to carbon fiber include a reduction in the amount of machining operations. Uh, however, we still have to drill and mill these objects and when we drill composite materials we tend to see some of the same types of defects or problems in that machining operation. In the top photograph there you can see uh, the entrance side of a hole and in like the roughly two o'clock position we notice what uh, some people would coin a rolled edge 
um, or slight delamination. Uh, you can see some torn fibers around the seven or eight o'clock position that were not cleanly cut away. Uh, they were ripped free. Uh, down on the bottom, we can see what is the beginning of some fairly substantial delamination, which is the separating of the layers of the composite. And remember I mentioned uh, the tape being laid in several layers. Uh, as the drill penetrates the workpiece, one of the struggles we have to deal with is preventing that separation of layers and the consequent weakening of the workpiece itself. Uh, also, particularly at that point in time, heat management becomes a problem. Uh, the heat built up in the tool and the machining operation can actually damage the workpiece fairly easily. These two illustrations show some varieties of methods by which the composite engineer will orient the fibers to achieve a certain type of strength or physical property. And if we understand how that composite is laid up, oftentimes we can predict some problems or perhaps some uh, conditions or defects that at the end of the day you may never be able to totally eliminate. Uh, picture on the left we see some uncut fibers around the two o'clock position. Uh, that looks like a 45, zero, 90 degree weave and really you can manage it, you're likely never going to completely eliminate it. A uh, photo on the right shows a, uh, a weave, kind of a basket weave type of a, a pattern there. And again, it, where the arrows are pointing, we would generally tend to find some type of uncut fiber or uh, surface finish irregularity. This is a, uh, a video from the uh, secret underground OSG archives using our high-speed photography equipment to show exactly what's happening on the offside or exit side of a hole. Now this is a tool that perhaps geometry-wise really isn't uh, the right selection for this particular application and or combined with feeds and speeds that are not uh, where they need to be and we'll discuss a little bit more about that. But you can see the delamination, the fibers tearing, they're not actually separating. And as I mentioned before, it's not like a metal cutting application. The, the fibers themselves are actually being shattered and you can see the shards blowing away to the right side of the screen there. Next up would be a tool that is more effectively cutting this material and you can literally see with that last revolution on the very end of the laminate a very clean cut edge and, and that's the goal obviously to machine these materials without that type of separation whether it's on the entrance side or the exit side and uh, that's a pretty clean cut hole right there and, and really what we're striving for. These are examples of various types of specialty drills, custom tooling that we have made for machining different types of composite laminates. There's a lot of different choices there. Um, we find that generally speaking, the majority of applications and problems and, and processes we work on are best served with a custom tool because of the difference in not only the composites but maybe the customer's demands for uh, quality and so forth. So we can tailor any of these design variables to improve or address certain things like tool life or quality of the actual machine surface. Things like the helix angle of a twist drill, the point design or point angle, uh, point thinning, and of course, uh, ultimately coatings surface treatments are, are very effective if they are addressed and targeted in the right fashion. And if you consider all of those features, we've kind of narrowed it down a bit. And the first tool we commonly employed would be uh, a double angle drill. Some people call these tools W drills, but double angle twist drill. It has a high helix and that is going to give us a better quality hole on the exit side of a drilling operation. And the reason that's important is because oftentimes the drilling applications are either going to be followed up with a secondary operation such as a chamfer for a bevel headed fastener or some other type of machining operation and that's going to maybe eliminate some of the defects that might show up. If that's the case we can target the exit side for our design features to give us overall uh, better tool life and lower cost per hole. Uh, this is a diamond coated tool. Uh, remember again I was talking about the abrasive nature of the tool. Uh, it is going to allow us to not only get a good clean hole but to repeat that hole very often for a long period of time. Next up would be a variation uh, of a multiple angle drill point. This is our triple angle drill. It's a straight flute design. It is targeted at producing a good quality hole both on the entrance side of the drilling operation and the exit side. 
Uh, it has a zero degree helix, so you don't have that force either trying to lift or tear the top side of the laminate layer or conversely the bottom side. And again, diamond coated tool. So we narrowed it down a little bit, but oftentimes people uh, will be looking at some of this presentation and, and they'll say to me, well, that's great, but okay, how do I, how do I choose further? And how do I decide what tool I want to apply? And the bottom line is you really don't. The production method is gonna decide which tool is suitable for what you're trying to achieve there. So the first thing I would ask in dealing with somebody that's trying to come up with a solution for a composite machining application is to find the production method. How are they drilling that hole? What are they using? The next is going to be to find the quality control constraints, the hole tolerance. What is the target? Is it to avoid delamination on the exit side or overall? We need to know that. Of course, physical dimensions, the depth of the hole, the diameter of the hole, all that kind of good stuff, shank design and so forth. We can take those bits of information and build a tool specifically for that application that is going to give you the lowest cost per hole over, the, over its tool life.